Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Asha Kothari Chaudhary and I am a professor of English at Guwahati University. The course we are doing is Indian writing in English and the module that we are looking at in the, in the drama unit is that on women's theater in India. So what do we need to know about uh, women's theater? What is women's theater? How is it different from a theater that is made by men and of men? Is it really different? So at the, at the nomenclature level itself, we begin to question what exactly is this theater that we are looking at in this module. It is obviously a theater made, written and performed by women. Its subject and object positions are probably predominantly those by women as they see fit to represent. And how does this particular theatre even begin to come on its own? Or is there any such thing as a proper, live, uh, vibrant women's theatre movement in India at all? These are some of the questions that we will explore in this module and we will be looking at a number of women playwrights, uh, women dramatists uh, as we go. So when we are talking about this kind of theatre which is exclusive to women, representational ideas that are brought in by women, uh, the specific kinds of issues that will be obviously thrown up are of course that what does this theatre do? Uh, does it really give rise to a different kind of a genre that deals only with the problems faced by women in society? Is this particular genre something that aims to make visible a number of taboo issues that come out or pertain to women's lives or women's communities? Do they make that direct connection with other women um, uh, readers or uh, audience members, is that connection really established? Now these are certain questions that, that we will ask as we go. What are the factors that influence the development of women's theatre? If you look at some of the important ideas that contribute to the emergence of these women playwrights, we find that there is a certain kind of rediscovery of women's theatre history in the West in the 1980s. This development, which is triggered by the ideas of feminism, quite obviously, is inspired again uh, by many female uh, activists who raise their concerns by means of writing. So inscription and embodied acting or play production becomes also one of the means of this uh, feminism uh, and a device with which that political feminism might be realized in real terms. The women's liberation movement of the 1960s and the 1970s helped in rediscovering the female hidden tradition in the field of theatrical writing. So the main motive behind the discovery or really the reclamation in some sense of women's theatre history is actually to recreate or understand or become aware of the fact that women not only face oppression in their everyday life but also in the domain of historiography where their works remain unrecognized and almost always hidden. Many plays written about women um, have been part of dramatic performances but their effort remains almost always unrecognized. There have been always women performers, dance choreographers, but they are not visible until the 19th century. According to Tutun Mukherjee, it is a politically nuanced theatre oriented towards change and produced by women with feminine concerns. It is a product of feminism and feminine awareness that shapes the making of the play." Unquote. And if we were to also cite what Lakshmi Subramanyam uh, says 
one of the important strands of women's theatre in India is really its intervention in the areas which directly concern women. This theatre has been used to voice those issues which are largely suppressed and voices remain repressed. Let us look now more directly at the theatre of women in India. This genre really refers to the whole gamut of productions and plays written by women about women and also characterized by consciousness of women as women. Women's theatre in the Indian context is rather a late development and yet it is something that has grown and burgeoned as it uh, moves through history. Despite the obstacles and lack of recognition, women have continued to voice their problems publicly and through various platforms of writing such as poetry or novel or in our case with drama. The 20th century witnesses the emergence of women playwrights in great numbers. It is now that women's theatre seems to come into its own. The feminist intervention in the area of women's theatre history finally begins to fuel the growth of women's theatre both in the West and also in India. Consciousness raising and through it changing the lot of women seems to be the two major concerns of women's theatre in India and therefore by all means it is proper to refer to women's theatre in India as an activist theatre. In India, women's theatre movement seems to go hand in hand with the street theatre movement as well, which is organised uh, with, with associations like the Jananatya Manch or the People's Theatre Forum. Women's theatre in India is largely the outcome of women's dissatisfaction over the various forms of, um, of resource generation that is never partaken of properly by women and of course against the exploitation that women face every day in daily life. Both experienced or young women playwrights like Mahashweta Devi, Usha Ganguly, Shanta Gokhale, Deena Mehta, Poili Sen Gupta, Bharati Sarabhai and Manjula Padmanabhan have written plays that raise the concerns of women, that put women at the centre and raise their voices so that they can be heard. One of the interesting books that have come in, in recent times is Tutun Mukherjee's Staging Resistance, plays by women in translation, which is a, a very important collection of plays written by women in India and serves as a supporting document for women's theatre in India. Each play that Mukherjee includes in this in anthology deals with the various problems faced by women in Indian society and the ways in which they cope with these problems. Having talked a little bit about women's theatre in India and its uh, history and its genealogy, we have of course been referring to women's theatre across various vernacular languages. Let us now look and focus upon women's theatre in English and the way in which it has grown and uh, developed. A few playwrights have written plays originally in English and have achieved a very limited visibility compared to the plays written by male playwrights. They include playwrights like Poili Sen Gupta, Manjula Padmanabhan, Deena Mehta and Bharati Sarabhai, all of whose writings seem to focus on issues relating to women. So this, it is, this is an interesting point here. You see, you could be a woman playwright and you could be writing on general issues, not focusing on women. So just because it is a woman who is the playwright does not really mean that this is women's theatre. That is not the type of theatre that we are looking at here. We are looking at playwrights, women playwrights, who are focusing on women's issues in this module. Awareness and creation followed by social change seems to be the major motive behind the scripting of these plays by women playwrights. Among the more important uh, playwrights of 
of this generation of contemporary India is Manjula Padmanabhan. Padmanabhan has contributed to the world of women's theatre by writing plays like Lights Out and Harvest in English. Lights Out deals with the issue of sexual violence against women in India, while Harvest is another well-known play by Padmanabhan that deals with the issue of organ selling in India. Manjula Padmanabhan has also written many short stories and therefore she is not merely a playwright, she writes across various genres. She writes short stories, novels, monologues and is also a proficient cartoonist. In Hidden Fires that comes in 2003, uh, this is a play we find which is in the form of a collection of monologues which deals with the various forms of violence and disorder that seem to have engulfed our society and most of which are targeted at women. In the 2001 publication, The Sex Debt, we find an anthology that contains a group of six short plays. In 2004, we have The Mating Game, which is a single play again written by Manjula Padmanabhan. Moving on to the work of Dina Mehta, we will find that she seems to have contributed socially conscious plays like The Myth Makers, Brides Are Not For Burning, Getting Away With Murder, Tiger Tiger and A Sister Like You. Among these plays, The Myth Maker happens to be her first full-length play that represents the Hindi film industry and the early rumblings of communalism in Mumbai. Tipu Sultan is the focus of a play here by Dina Mehta in, a, in, in the play entitled Tiger, Tiger. It is interesting to note that Tipu, Tipu Sultan is also the subject and the title subject really uh, of a play by Girish Karnad, one of the most well-known uh, male playwrights of our times as well. So how does Dina Mehta's take on Tipu? Uh, differ from Karnad's? That could be one of the interesting questions that we could ask uh, ourselves. Brides Are Not For Burning is a play that represents the presence of dowry system in India and the violent impact of the social system on women. Although the whole idea of brides are not for burning is in its face extremely in our time cliched already but it has to be remembered that although the idea or the fact that such news is always been harped upon and has become points of activism for many, many years, does not really take away anything from the sordidness of its reality. And therefore, uh, it is important that a playwright like Dina Mehta chooses to use dowry as a, one of the subject matters of her uh, plays. In Getting Away with Murder, we find that uh, Mehta represents the various forms of violence, again, that uh, women and female children uh, experience in society. In The Myth Makers, uh, we have a play which actually won the Sultan Padamsi playwriting competition in 1968. So this is obviously one of her uh, earliest works. Sister Like You is a play that represents the notion that introduces the notion of domestic violence in India. You have also the play When One Plus One Makes Nine which deals with the theme of family planning. Again the onus of which is almost always on the woman. With the work of Bharati Sarabhai we have, in fact, the first woman playwright who has written in English. Her two important plays, Well of the People, came way back in 1943. And the play called Two Women was published in 1952. Well of the People is an idealistic play with a Gandhian tone by Sarabhai. 
and the play is about helping humanity by making water the life-generating force available to all. Two women represents a, a fascinating group of women and their different and contrasting outlook to life. Coming to the work of another contemporary playwright, Poli Sen Gupta, we must understand that Sen Gupta is at first a children's writer and then a playwright. She writes about women's issues in English and has enriched the world of children's literature in India through so many uh, fictional works for children. She is based in Bangalore, is a playwright, teacher, columnist and a children's writer. Mangalam is Sen Gupta's first full-length play. It deals with the social theme of violence and abuse experienced by women in Indian society. Another well-known play by uh, Sen Gupta is Keats was a tuba, which was shortlisted for the British Council International New Playwriting Prize in the year 1997. The women playwrights writing in English are actually in a more disadvantageous position than their male counterparts, primarily because plays written in English are watched only by a select group of people. Secondly, the prevailing gendered perception that women are less capable of producing quality work always works against women writers. What then is feminist theatre or women's theatre? Let us now consider this in some detail. The two terms feminist theatre and women's theatre are often used synony synonymously. The concept of feminist theatre is a 19th century phenomenon and it has overt political un uh, underpinnings which flourished particularly in the USA and in Britain and characterized by the consciousness of women as women and directed towards the destruction of social differences and creation of women characters in the subject position. In the Indian context, the term feminist theatre includes plays written by men about women as well. For example, plays such as Silence, The Court is in Session by Vijay Tendulkar and Nagamandala by Girish Kannad are often defined and considered as feminist plays. Women's theatre, although it is about consciousness raising by women about women, it is less overtly political, unlike feminist theatre in the West. Unlike feminist theatre in India, which is a domain of both men and women playwrights, women's theatre in the West is particularly the domain of women that intervene into the areas which concern women. Poili Sen Gupta's Mangalam was a play about women about women representing the presence of domestic violence marital infidelity and other forms of abuse that women face across time, cultures and societies. It was first performed in 1993 by Playpen at Guru Nanak Bhavan, Bangalore. It contains two acts. The characters who discuss the play in Act 1 become the main characters whom we meet in Act 2. Both the acts deal with the same situation so as to blur the distinction between theatre and reality. In Mangalam, Sen Gupta follows the technique of a play within a play and the situation of the audience is not different from the fictional characters that they watched in the play. For example, in Mangalam, the fictional character Mangalam is a victim of rape in Act 1 and the viewer is Sumati but in Act 2, Sumati herself turns into a victim of molestation. The play shows the presence of violence against women everywhere, irrespective of age, education or economic conditions. Act 1 revolves around the death of Mangalam, the wife of Dorai and the mother of Usha, Mani, Chitra and Kanan. The setting of Act 1 is the Dorai household and the very beginning hints for something fishy that is about to happen. Focusing on Mangalam's death in Act 1, Sen Gupta will bring to our notice the various problems that women ceaselessly encounter in Indian society. Chitra, the daughter of Dorai and Mangalam, wants to pursue her studies instead of getting married, but Thangam wants her to be married immediately because Thangam thinks 
that education is of no use for a girl and so Chitra should be married off. Similarly, Mangalam's daughter Usha is also not free from abuse in her marital life. She has been cons consistently uh, humiliated and tortured by her in-laws and this compels her to come back to her parents' house. The actual reason for Mangalam's death comes to light. Mangalam, it seems, was the victim of violence perpetrated by her husband. Dorai went on torturing her physically and mentally, even calling her a prostitute and abusing her verbally. Mangalam takes sleeping pills and intentionally harms her own health because she is tired of her life after experiencing constant abuse. Act 2 begins with Suresh and Sumati discussing the play that they watched in the, on the previous day. During their discussion, it turns out that the play, playwright will bring into focus the biased treatment that a girl child faces in Indian households. And then Sumati reveals that she herself had experienced partial treatment uh, from her mother, uh, especially in comparison to her brother Suresh. Thus, the play affirms the fact that such bias in terms of bringing up a male or a female child is consistently present in Indian society. The conversation between Suresh and Sumati bears witness to the fact that the stereotypical and traditional notion of women as mere objects of sex is not yet changed. For Suresh, girls are nothing but objects of desire or sexual pleasure and he does not even bother not to hurt the sentiments of the girls with whom he has multiple affairs. At the center of Act 2, we have Sumati and the multiple abuses that she experiences despite of the fact that she is educated or, or empowered. She goes through the trauma of a broken engagement and then becomes a victim of molestation as well. Similarly, Thangam is also a victim of betrayal in her conjugal relationship with Srini, who is carrying, a, carrying on a secret relationship with another woman. The majority of male characters in these plays use and abuse their women for their own vested interests or sexual uh, abuse. The only male character who stands in opposition to what the majority male will do is Vikram and goes on to even threatening his own father to defend Sumati. Perhaps through Vikram, the playwright keeps open a ray of hope. Marriage, family, relationships, Everywhere it is the man who takes the upper hand otherwise and dominates women. This biased treatment of women has been so rooted in our society that people tend to accept it as normal. The root of the problem really faced by women goes back to all the patriarchal uh, underpinnings of our, so of our social system, which enables men to subjugate women in all social re relationships. The same system is also responsible for creating and strengthening the gender divide on the basis of which women are always treated as the neglected other. So in summing up, let us understand that a women's theatre in India, in English, is mainly uh, activist theatre and we have both men and women who could be termed as feminist uh, activist writers. The play that we focused upon in this module for close reading was Mangalam, which is a social realist play that depicts the plight of women in Indian society and can be squarely put into the category of women's theatre as it is a play about women written by a woman. Thank you.